Hello, I'm Chris Richter. Welcome back again. We're going to look at another HTML CSS JavaScript based activity that you can put into your education content. This one is a true false collection of questions. So we have we have a collection of true false questions that come from an array hidden in the background and students click on the tick or the cross to decide whether it's true or false and they're given a, some feedback based on the question that they or the answer they gave, which then allows them to go to the next question. Uh, before we go any further though, there will be more videos in this series, so please subscribe and keep an eye on it and I'll show you a bit more about the HTML and the JavaScript. What we're going to do in this video is take you through step by step to see how this is created and what's involved in it and how to put this into your learning management system really easily. So let's go. The question is, answer the following questions by clicking true or false icon beside the question, was Chris Richter a Prime Minister of Australia? The answer is definitely no. It says here you chose false, the answer is false. Chris Richter is not the Prime Minister yet or ever. If we go next question, notice the next question button appeared, is yellow a primary colour? If we tick yes, it says you chose true. Now if I chose no, it would actually say you chose false, the answer is true. Uh, in RYB or subtractive colour model, blah blah blah. Next question button appears, so we click on next. Does America have the largest sand island in the world? If we click true, you chose true, the answer is actually false, and then it gives you the explanation as to what. We click next, and because that was the last question, it now has a restart button. Click restart, takes us back to the beginning. So that's the whole activity. Let's look at the code behind how that was actually created. First of all, the HTML, which is quite simple. We have a heading two with the instructions. That can be any heading you like. We have a div, which is the question box. So that's this question box here. That area there is called question box. Then we have another ID with the question text. So I've separated the box and the text only so that we can hide the box if we need to. We can change the text while the box is hidden if we need to. That can all happen in the background. Then we have our two buttons and these are icons using Font Awesome. So if you haven't used Font Awesome before, check out one of the other videos on Font Awesome. Font Awesome allows you to add uh, scalable icons to your content, which you can color and overlay and do all sorts of things. So I've just got a times, which is the X, a check, which is the tick, as the two options with RI meaning ricochet in the front just to differentiate my ID tags from anything else. RI check false and RI check true. Then we have another bit after that which is the response. So it's currently hidden using class RI hide which is over here. RI hide is whoop, display none is RI hide. So that's hiding the response text. And then we also have a button for next question, which is RI hide, meaning it's currently hidden as well. And then we have a reset button, which is also RI hide, which means it is hidden too. So it's not available yet. Let's look at the JavaScript. JavaScript is a little bit different. We have current question, which is the ID number of our current question. Then we have a questions array. What this means is that you can create as many questions as you like in here. You can just keep adding them one after the other. We've got three questions in here at the moment. All you need to do is put in the question text, the response, the answer of whether the answer is false or true. So in the first one it's false, next one is true, next one is false. We can just keep building that array up to as many questions as you like. For the JavaScript, when it starts, we use a function uh, that initializes when the code starts up. So that's okay, we'd use function reset, which basically resets everything here just to make sure everything's in the right spot and everything that's hidden is hidden and everything that's supposed to be visible is visible and to load the first question text as well. So that function fn reset is down here and it calls fn reset on load which means it goes to find the question response and it hides it. So it adds a class called ri hide which is this one. Make sure it's hidden. It is hidden anyway to start with but when we reset it we want to make sure it's hidden. The uh, next question button is hidden as well. The reset button is hidden, so it's not there yet. Then we also make sure that the question box is visible. So I'm removing RI hide from the question box to make sure that whole box is, is visible for students to see in case it's been hidden for some reason. In this question, or in this case, it shouldn't actually be ever hidden anyway. We reset the current question number to zero, meaning it's back to question number one. The first question, which is question zero. That's the first stage. It's all reset and it's all ready to go. When 
someone clicks on the true button on the, the first tick box or the second cross, so true or false, we have RI check true, which is just here. RI check true is an ID. That means we add a listener to that particular icon. So when they click on it, it runs this function called FN check true. So we've used the same function for true and false, but we're differentiating whether they clicked on the true button or whether they clicked on the false button. It goes down to FN check. There's FN check there, and the answer is either true or false. So what we need to do now is get everything else ready. So first of all, we're just double checking by hiding the response again, making sure this response is gone in case there was a response there from the previous question. We just want to clear that. So just make sure it's out of the way. We're then going to get the question answer. So let's find out what the current answer actually is because we're going to use that later. So we go questions and questions is the array just here. Questions. And then we go current question, which is zero. So question zero and grab the answer. So question answer is question zero answer, which is actually the same as this. So technically we could have replaced that with that and it's much, much shorter because it means the same thing. So if question answer equals this answer here, so if the actual question answer that we're on equals true uh, or false, and that matches the answer true or false here, then they've obviously got the answer correct. If they've got it correct, so here we go, show correct, we then find the question response, add RI correct to it. That just means that it puts a green box around it instead of a red box. If it was incorrect, we would add the RI incorrect class, which would make it a red box below when it appears. Then we just need to add the text to the response. So there's RI response. RI question response is just there. So inside this div, we're telling it to add the words you chose and the answer, which is the answer from the button they clicked on. The answer is, and that gives us our question answer, which came from the question array dot and then the question current question response what is that bit let's have a look question response is this bit here response where it gives them some feedback on their question whether they got it right or wrong it still gives them that feedback that's if they got the answer correct if they got the answer incorrect and got the wrong answer we just want to show the or add the class ri incorrect which gives it a red border around it instead then we're going to add the inner HTML to the response to say you chose something. The answer is whatever it is. So obviously that'll be different because they got it wrong. And then the feedback as well or the response text goes in there and that would be displayed. So in other words, when I click that one, the word true that goes with that checks and says you chose true. The answer is actually false because the answer false came from here. Answer false. And then the last bit is to show the question response. So to show that bit there because it was hidden. So it's now being displayed by removing the RI hide class. There's a display none, gets rid of that. And then the last bit is to remove RI hide from the next question button. So that next question button now appears ready for them to go to the next question or they can obviously choose the answer that it was supposed to be. So they can actually switch those backwards and forwards. You could turn that off so it doesn't happen too, but I didn't worry about that. Then you go next question. When you click next question, it goes to RI next question is an events listener called event listener called FN next. When they click on FN next, which is next question just there, FN next is a function down the bottom just here. FN next, so we add the hide class to the question response. So basically get rid of that writing down the bottom. We check to make sure that we haven't got to the end of our questions. So we look at our questions array and check the length of it. Make sure we're still within our questions or underneath the amount of questions. We increase our question by one. So current question equals current question plus one. That could be current question plus equals one as well. Then we add the hide to next question. So we get rid of the next question button. We get rid of the reset button if it's there. If for some reason they've got to the end of the questions, then we hide the next question button. 
by adding our hide. We hide the question box and then we display the re reset button, which gives them the reset button over here ready to go back to the start and start again. Regardless of whether they it's the last question or not, when they click FN next, we want to make sure we hide the response. So we add our hide to get rid of that text at the bottom. And we also want to make sure we add the current question in, question, current question, uh, into that text because they may have gone to the next question, which is an actual real next question, and we need to make sure the text is in there. So that's why we have RI question text in a HTML, which adds in question, current question being whatever the question number is now, dot question, which comes out of our array over here and puts in the, in this case, it'll be the next question, is yellow a primary color? And that's all we needed to do. And that's the code that creates that. So I hope you find that useful. Now, how do we get that into our LMS? We simply click on embed, hide all of these, go to iframe and copy, go into our course, into settings, go into our HTML, paste it in, and save and display. And we now have our quiz questions inside our LMS. So who was was Chris Richter a Prime Minister of Australia? Well, the answer is no. So you chose false. The answer is false. Perfect. And next question. Now notice that that doesn't quite fit. So I do need to go into my settings, go into the code and make that 400 so that it fits correctly. That's about it. That's how we add our question to our content. Hopefully you found that useful. And like I said before, make sure you subscribe because there is a couple more of these activities to go. If you've got to this one and missed the previous ones, check the latest few videos because there's some more there. I'll try and put links down the bottom for you to get to those other activities too. Subscribe. Talk to you soon. I'm Chris Richter.